Hi everyone, my name is Alex and let's talk a bit about structural subtyping in Go. So what is structural subtyping? You've probably heard of generics, classes, inheritance, and pattern matching, but probably not a lot of structural subtyping. And that's just because structural subtyping is a fancy name for duct typing. And duct typing I'm sure you heard of. So these are all just means to achieve abstraction. An abstraction is a very common programming language goal so that you can write your code in a gener generic way and it has generic behavior that works for multiple types or a class of types. So first a little bit of history. Uh, structural subtyping is not all that new. Even though it's used in today's programming languages, you can go all the way back to 1985 to Reynolds' work called Three Approaches to Type Structure, where he mentions field forgetting. And with field forgetting, what he means is that if you have type A, it has more fields than type B, but all the fields that type B has, so all of the attributes, the functions that type B has, type A also has, also implements, you can say that type A is a subtype of type B. So you can forget those extra, f extra fields that type A has. And if you go a little forward to 1988, to Cordelis' work, he actually mentions structural subtyping. So here, the concept was already in place. This is one of the first places where uh, we see this term being coined. So. I'd like to uh, quote a phrase from his introduction. He says the following. As an example, a simple notion of structural subtyping can be defined on record types. Two record types are in a subtyping relation if one of them has more fields than the other, while the common fields have compatible types. Given a record value, it's possible to infer its most general record type and to verify that that record is a member of any given subtype of that type. I hope that made sense, but if not, we're going to go to some examples now, and we're going to use Go for that. Actually, we're going to use a standard library of Go. Uh, so here, for example, you have the function read at least in the IO library, IO package, and you can see that it accepts this type reader, and this is nothing more than an interface. And an interface in Go is a means to achieve structural subtyping. An interface is nothing more than a set of uh, methods. And here, you can see that the in reader interface has the read method. So if a type wants to implement this interface, it has to implement this method. For example, we can create a, a type called slow reader, which has this function read that reader uh, requires. And here, we, we're only going to read one byte at a time, so this is really a slow reader. We could also have another type called fast reader that also implements this type read, but has a different behavior. So this time, we read multiple bytes at a time. So of course, we would prefer fast reader over slow reader, but this is just to demonstrate that we can have different behaviors over the same interface. So all that we care is that the reader, uh, the type that implements the reader, has the read method, and we can use it anywhere. So for example, if we were to use fast reader here, uh, it would just look like this. It's very simple. And you notice that there's a parameter there called min. It's an integer. And what if you were to read the entire buffer? So you want to read at least the entire buffer in this case. You could just implement another function called read full. And actually, this is in the standard library already. So you can see here that this is a one-liner function that's actually very useful. And it shows how powerful this structural subtyping can be. So just as you have uh, the reader interface, you also have the writer interface. And it just requires that the types implement the write method. You also have the reader-writer interface. So you can see how this uh, starts building to a lot of complex programs. And in Go, actually, you have a facility that you can use to make this look simpler. You can just expand reader and writer inside this interface, and it's going to work. 
So every type that implements reader writer must have both the read method and also the write method. So what we've done is we've achieved abstraction, generic behaviors without inheritance. Many people believe that's not possible, but we've just showed it is, and actually many programming languages use that. So for example, uh, in Python, you have a case like this. You have class A, and if you want class B to inherit from A, you have to manually, uh, explicitly mention that B inherits from A. So this is the difference between inheritance and structural subtyping. In structural subtyping, you don't need to mention the name of the, the type you're uh, inheriting from, let's say, like that. So for example, in my reader uh, here, we just implement the method read, but we never mention the, the interface called reader. This is the main difference between inheritance and structural subtyping. So if you want to keep anything from this uh, presentation, this would be it. Uh, this is a nice to have in your, uh, in your knowledge. <laughs> so we've presented structural subtyping in Go, but Go is not alone. There are actual, uh, actually a lot of other uh, very famous programming languages that also have structural subtyping. In OCaml, for example, uh, structural subtyping is the main way to achieve abstraction, just like in Go. And in C++, you can achieve structural subtyping by using function templates. And that's it. I hope you liked it, and thanks for watching.